as the genius of Shakespeare, through the whole extent of the poet's province, is the object of our inquiry, we should do him great injustice if we did not attend to his peculiar felicity in those fictions and inventions from which poetry derives its highest distinction, and from whence it first assumed its pretensions to divine inspiration and appeared the associate of religion. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that loud upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried, now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms held up for monuments, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim-visaged war has smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. But I, that am not shaped for sportive tricks, I that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up, and that so unlamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them. Why, I, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless to spy my shadow in the sun and descant on mine own deformity. But since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these farewell-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days.